Hi, and welcome to the July edition of According to Pete. Today, we're gonna talk about current sensing, why you wanna do it, how you're gonna do it. And uh, at the end, I'm gonna run you through calibration of one of our current sensors that we have available. So the reason why we do current sensing is because we, um, we, uh, we expect a current to change in a certain part of a circuit or we need to make operational decisions based on uh, what a circuit is doing, or we're afraid that something is going to burn. This is usually my case. I'm afraid something's going to burn, and I wanna know if the current is going up in a certain section so I can shut it off. So there's a couple of different ways to, uh, to sense current in a circuit. This, using Ohm's law, okay? So suppose you've got something sitting out here that uh, is going to have a varying current, and you need to know what it's gonna do, right? Okay. So one method of sensing current is to actually place a resistance in series with your load. And ideally, it's a very small resistance, right? Um, and I'll explain that in a sec. So typically, you use something like a 0 0.1 ohm resistor. And so as current changes in this thing, there's just a really small little signal that generates over this resistor, OK? Really small, kind of hard to read. So what you typically do is you take this to um, an instrumentation amplifier. So like an op amp, you got a signal in here, and another one there, and, and, um, and actually, <laughs> I can just cut to the chase. There's a few parts that do exactly this, uh, the INA169. And the reason it's a cool little part is because when you set up an instrumentation amplifier like this, you have a couple of resistances here. You need a, a little driver circuit, and goes to a load and you measure something else. The cool thing about this is that if you don't have a part that's got all of these things on a single die, you end up with tolerances that are really wiggy. But the, the, the INA169 actually takes care of this for you. It's kind of a cool part. The problem with this is that if you're sensing a really large current, this resistor will create a much larger voltage than you might want to have between your load and ground. Like for example, a 0.1 ohm resistor will generate, you know, at 10 amps, it'll generate a volt of noise. A lot of times that's not acceptable, okay? Now, something also cool, and I'll write this down, INA169. Another cool thing about this part is it's a high side sensor. What that means is that you don't have to put the resistor down here on the low side, you can put it up here on the high side. Now that's cool and all. Problem is, this is still a, ser a series circuit. You're still going to introduce noise to your load, okay? But since it's a high side sensor, what you can do is you can put it before your V-reg, your voltage regulator, okay? Voltage regulator is designed to take that noise out. And so you can still sense what's going on in your circuit without actually introducing a whole bunch of noise. Pretty cool, huh? The other method of doing this is uh, by Hall effect. Basically, uh, any conductor that has a current going through it makes a magnetic field, right? And so we've got a sensor that can sense that and it'll tell you how much the magnetic field is doing and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, we sell a part called the ACS712 and it is a Hall effect current sensor. The first cool thing Grab marker. Where Ohm's law related parts like the INA169 are concerned, uh, they're using a resistance like 0.1 ohm, which is a small resistance, but like I was saying before, at 10 amps, it's generating a volt of noise, okay? And there's ways around it. This guy, comparatively, its inline resistance is on the order of 1.2 milliohms. So, you know, like two orders of magnitude less. So, the upshot of that is you can use it on the low side and it's not gonna generate that much noise to your load, okay? Second thing, the current path through this device is completely isolated from the sensing circuit, right? So what that means is you can also use it on the high side. The reason you can't do, or why high side sensing is difficult is because you have this common mode voltage that is so different from the supply voltage of the sensor, right? And the INA169 allows you to do this. It'll allow like 60 volts of higher voltage from its supply voltage and it won't go wonky, okay? This thing has an isolated current path. So you can use it on the low side, you can use it on the high side, 
doesn't matter. You don't have to use it in front of a regulator. You can put this thing pretty much anywhere. The third thing about this that's cool, at zero current through this, it will give you an output that is VCC over two, right? Half of your supply voltage, right? So externally, you're powering this thing from five volts and it's got a ground and then, yeah, the sense voltage over here. So if you're powering this thing with five volts, it'll give you an output of two and a half volts when there's no current going through it. What does that mean? That means it'll do negative current as well as positive current. So this part, the one, the version that we sell is the five amp version. It comes in a di few different versions. The five amp version has, and I got it in my notes here, the deflection of 185 millivolts at the output per amp that goes through this thing. Now that's not what I would call really great resolution, right? A lot of the currents that we deal with here are small currents, right? We make a board that's got this part plus a buffer amplifier with some gain. You can set the gain and you can set the reference voltage and it works out pretty cool. That skew, S E N 0888 Point I wanna make, whether you're using this thing or you're using the uh, INA169 or other derivative, you always want to calibrate these things, right? Because um, there are tolerances, there is some drift you might have to deal with, there's probably some noise you have to deal with, and I'll talk about that in a sec. So you always want to go through some kind of calibration with these. You got to know how much current you're getting per millivolt of deflection. Here we are again. I've got this hooked up, and this was my ADC example from a couple of months ago. Uh, the code is, I altered the code a little bit to average out some of these readings, right? This thing can be noisy, so you are gonna have to do a little bit of averaging in code. Makes it a lot easier to read something. And I've got this set up for my power supply, and I've got it limited over there to about 100-ish milliamps, and I got my meter here. I'm using this as my calibration standard. I don't think this has ever been calibrated since it left the factory. I've got my five volt supply, I've got ground, I got my sense line going to my ADC value and it's spitting out here. This is the current. It's going through the meter, coming from my power supply over there. First thing you do, set your reference current to zero. Once you know that it's zero current, zero current, you set the reference on this guy. And I apologize this being upside down from where you're looking. There's two adjustments on this. There's two pots. One says VREF, one says gain. First thing you wanna do is you wanna set the VREF pot and you basically just set this, assuming you've got a setup like this, or maybe you're reading it with a voltmeter. You just wanna set it to the point where you wanna start reading from. So if you wanna do a positive and negative current possibly, you would set it for a halfway value of your ADC. In this case, we're running on a 10-bit ADC on the, the red board. And so it's somewhere around 512 or thereabouts, okay? That way you get positive and negative deflection. So you set that, and I set this earlier, and it's right about 550, eh, close enough. Doesn't have to be exact. And you also want to take note of the value, right? So you mark, mark this down, and it's a little it's a little noisy, right? So you've got to kind of look at it and go, mm, 530-ish or so. Write that value down. Then what you do, you set your current to the max value that you want to read. So if, for example, you expect a circuit to be drawing 50 milliamps, you might set your max current on your current reference to 100 milliamps, okay? So eh, you can see some, some deflection there. So you hook that guy up, and my reference here says I'm running about 102 milliamps, so that's pretty close, right? Take note of that value, then you set the gain pot over here this guy to about as much deflection as you want to read or max deflection, right? So if you're going from 500 to whatever, and I'll tell you something, uh, the uh, op amp buffer out here uh, on this board is an inverting op amp. So if you have positive going current, it's going to give you a negative going pulse from your reference of 500 and some ADC value, okay? So you adjust the gain pot until you get, you know, a fairly decent number that you can read easily for your maximum current deflection. That makes sense? So previously I adjusted this thing and I'm getting about eh, 350, 3, 4 in there someplace. Okay, so you take note of that value. Then what you do is you set your reference current to zero again. So you disconnect it. 
and you double check that your VREF ADC value is still steady. If it's not, you got to go back and do it again. Um, and sometimes, you know, your power supply can drift. We're ballparking here. Come on. Um, so you got to watch that. But this is just to verify that you did it right. Sort of a sanity check. Okay, everything's still the same. We can move on now. Then you have your, your maximum and minimum current being zero and 102 milliamps. And you have uh, your ADC, right? So I, I, what am I doing? I'm, I'm defining a line and it's a linear relationship. So I have, I have my points and I have my slope. And I'm, yeah, basically I'm just figuring out the equation for a line. Right, and so uh, earlier I had set this up, and I came out with um, a resolution of about 0 0.56 milliamps per ADC division. Okay, so you know roughly about 500 microamps, not too bad. And then once you have that number, you just apply it in your code. It's that simple. I will warn you that this this is not. I mean, we're we're talking about millivolts worth of deflection here. Okay. That's in the noise. So you're gonna have to, like for example, my, my code that I'm running on this thing, I'm averaging it quite heavily. I mean, I'm, I'm averaging a thousand ADC reads um, and I'm getting updates eh, roughly about every 100 milliseconds, which is not too bad. Will it do a higher frequency? Yes, it'll do a higher frequency, but you're gonna have to you know, condition that in code or maybe you wanna put like another cap on the output of the op amp, but off the top of my head, I can't remember if the OPA 344, which is the op amp in that, uh, how steady it is for how much value of output capacitance. So you might want to check that. I don't want to tell you anything that's a lie. Da -da -da. I've got current! That's the low current sensor board. I definitely don't want to steer you away from the uh, uh, the Ohm's Law ones that use the, the resistors. We do sell a few of those, and I, you know, they, they are good parts. Um, but, you know, they have their application just like this one has its application, and your mileage may vary. Think about what you want and uh, make your selection. That's cool. Keep the questions and comments coming and put them in the comment section down yar, or you can email them to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line, and we will check them out and get them in the queue. Until next month, thanks for watching. See ya. Make love to the camera. Are we going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.